Hallelujah. We worship him. Amen. Not because of what he has done for us. We worship him for who he is. Hallelujah. He is Emmanuel. Which means he is God with us. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Brother Cruz, he's Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Which means he's our provider. Yes. He's a healer. Yes. Has anybody been sick? Yes, He's a potter. Yes. Have you ever been broken? Yes. But the Bible says the potter will put you back yes. together again. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Has anybody ever been lost? Yes. Yes. Well, he is a way out of nowhere. Yes. Have you ever been thirsty? Because the Bible says he's living water. Yes. Have you ever been hungry? But the Bible says that he's the bread of life. So we have a right to worship him on today. He's the most high God. He's our kinsman redeemer. He's our Savior. And our Lord. Oh, come let us adore him. Yes, sir. Not only in the good times, let us adore him in those troubling times. Let us adore him when we're not sure about what tomorrow is going to bring. He's worth it. Tell your name, I say, He's worth it. He's worth it. In the midst of our frustration, he's worthy. In the middle of our uncertainty, he's God with us. And we give God some praise on today because he is with us. Come with me to the gospel of St. Luke. Chapter number one, beginning with verse 34. Amen. Amen. I believe Elder Keel already covered this, but to God be the glory. Yeah, God be the glory. The Gospel of St. Luke, mm -hmm. chapter number one, beginning with the 34th verse. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it reads as follows, beginning with verse number 34. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. Uh -huh. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. Yes, yes. My Lord, my Lord. 
May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. The word of our Lord is blessed. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come now as humbly as we know how. Thanking you for this another day that you have bestowed upon us. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins. And we ask you, Lord, to create in us a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us, restoring to us the joy of your salvation. And we simply ask you, God, on today to empty us out and send us an overflow of your spirit. We ask you, Lord, to feed us from your table. Send us an applicable word that will edify us, your people. So we simply ask you to fall afresh so that you get the glory and the honor and we give you the highest praise. Yes. For thine is the kingdom, Hallelujah. the power and the glory. Uh -huh. And it is in Jesus' matchless name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 You may be seated. For a few moments on today, I want to talk to you from the subject. Give me Jesus. We are going to exchange gifts. We probably spent a lot of money. But the gift that we all need is Jesus. Christmas, my brothers and my sisters, is understandably one of the most celebrated and most popular holidays in the world. More people celebrate Christmas uh -huh. than any other holiday. And it is celebrated by many nationalities outside of the United States of America. As we say, Christmas is the most popular and it is probably one of the most financially lucrative holidays to date. However, my brothers and my sisters, it is probably the most least understood by the people who celebrate it. All right. Come on now. Yeah. There are holidays, Deacon Smith, Amen. that are people. And there are holidays, Deacon S. Brown, that celebrate historical events. However, when it comes to Christmas, we celebrate a divine person. And we remember a divine event. Understand, Reverend Carter, that Christmas is not a celebration of human achievement. It is a celebration of divine accomplishment. So far, we celebrated Black Friday. Amen. If you don't want to let me know, say amen. Amen. <laughs> But we joyfully celebrated Black Friday. We willingly celebrated Cyber Monday. Amen. We watched TV shows like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, Frosty the Snowman. We are planning family dinners, and some are getting ready for Santa Claus. All right. But my brothers and my sisters, none of these well, go ahead, reflect the true meaning uh -huh. of Christmas. That's right. That's right. Preach. Change your name. Preach. They don't reflect the true meaning 
of Christmas because everything that I need is man-made. Are y'all with me on today? And there's nothing man-made about Christmas. It's not man. But it is the Holy Spirit yeah. who is at the heart of the Christmas story of the birth of Jesus. When we as believers celebrate Christmas, we reflect on the fact that God has sent his only begotten son into the world to suffer and die for the sins that we have committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Restart the movement. The initial promise of a savior is not found in the pages of the New Testament. All right. But in the beginning, in Genesis. Come on, God. When we visit Genesis, when we go back, we understand that there are two major components that make the incarnation of Jesus Christ necessary. Number one, the fall and the sinfulness of mankind. And number two, we have a covenant-making God a covenant keeping God, a covenant revealing God, and a covenant enabling God. And we must understand on today, as we prepare to celebrate, that a covenant is simply an agreement. And let me tell you something, we don't have the power to make an agreement with God. Preach, Larry Mosley. I'm doing the best I can, Pastor. The agreement is not between us and him. Deacon Woods is between him and us. Amen. Amen. The purpose of the divine covenants is for them to be vehicles of expression of God's will and purpose to man. Covenants or these agreements are ways by which God's will and his purpose are fulfilled. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. So in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, God created mankind, both man and woman. Yes. And he created a covenant between Mankind and himself. Amen. We call that the Edenic covenant. We can see the word Eden in there. The Edenic covenant, or the covenant made at Eden, was made before the entrance of sin. All right. The covenant involved the original man. And woman. Amen. That's Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it reveals God's original purpose for his creation. We were made in the image and likeness of God. Yeah. Yeah. Not we were to be fruitful and multiply. Amen. Let me throw this in parenthetically. The fruitfulness was not just natural. Huh? All right. Now. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. Come on now. But spiritual reproduction as well. It involved populating the earth with a race of people. That would know God, be like God, and serve God. Amen. Not only were they to be fruitful, 
and multiply, they were to subdue the earth. This subduing denotes warfare. And that that means to conquer and subjugate. This implies an enemy that Adam needed to conquer. Adam was to conquer Satan. All right. They were to be fruitful and multiply. Yes. Naturally and spiritually. Subdue the earth. They were to eat the herbs and the fruits. This involves sustenance for man's physical existence because eating meat was not allowed until the Noahic covenant. That's Noah. All right. What? Noahic covenant. They were to have dominion and rule, that which means rulership over creation. They were to till the ground. This involved man's occupation. Man was designed to work, not stay home and play PlayStation. All right. The terms of this covenant were based on mankind's ability. To walk in faith and by faith and to walk in obedience. Yes. Right. See, there's nothing new on this. Right. Adam was given only one command uh, a prohibition. All right. He was forbidden uh -huh. to partake of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Am I in the book church? Yes. All right. Yes. Wow. Understand the fact, Reverend Slater, that God is a covenant making God. He's a covenant keeping God, which yes. means that the as the creator, he was obligated to his creation. All right. That's Genesis 1 26 through 28. With the fall of mankind, Due to sin, God was still obligated by his own will to mankind. Amen. Especially in the realm of redemption. This is to be foretold by the new covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ. All right. Now in our text, as Elder Kiel read so eloquently, we have a divine messenger. Yeah. In verse 26, that's Gabriel. In verse 27, we have a divine choice. In verse 3, we have a divine blessing. Verse 28 to 30. And in verse number 31, we have a divine child. He lets her know you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus. Yeah. Yes, sir. Understand initially, Mary was perplexed yeah. by the favor that she had found with God. Out of many people, God could have chosen. He chose her for this divine assignment. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. I want you to understand that Mary is the recipient of God's grace, not the giver of God's grace. Amen. Somebody will catch that later. All right. Amen. Mary was perplexed. But then she began to ponder as Gabriel moved from Mary's favor to her child who will soon be conceived. Mm -hmm. So she was perplexed. She pondered. But Gabriel says, You shall call his name Jesus. Yes. Jesus means the Lord is salvation. Psalm 27, verses 1 and 2 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength 
of my life. Do I got some folks up in here that God is the strength of your life? Whom shall I be afraid? See, when the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and my foes, and my haters, they stumbled and they fell because the Lord is my salvation. Do I got some folks that want to give God praise up in here on Facebook because God is your salvation? Gabriel tells her the divine child will be great. This Jesus, Deacon Simpson, he will be great. His deeds will be great. His teaching will be great. And the fruit of his labor will be great. See, God is sending his son because he's a covenant making God. And he's a covenant keeping God. And Jesus is the savior of the world. Tell your neighbor he will be great. We have to understand that God is the saving God and he specializes in redeeming those who are lost. Jesus, he will be great. Jesus, God, is sending his only begotten son into the world, not to condemn the world. This Jesus. He will be great. When you think about Jesus being great, we have to know deep down on the inside that Jesus is extraordinary. Jesus is magnificent in every way. His power is great. Jesus is all-knowing, and he's the only one fit to be an all-sufficient Savior. When I think about Jesus yeah. and all that he done for me, my soul cries out. Praise God for saving a wretch like me. Yeah. Understand yeah. that his greatness is connected to his God nature. Jesus' greatness is not derived from any other source outside of himself. Gabriel, he lets her know that this divine child is to be named Jesus and he will be the son of the most high God. Yes. Jesus. Yes. He is God incarnate. Yes. Jesus. Yes. He's perfectly righteous. Yes. Jesus. Yes. He's enduringly sincere. Yes. Jesus will be our sinless sacrifice. Yes. Jesus will provide yes. himself as a substitute for us. Yes. Yes. And Mary said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. I like this part. Let it be to me according to your word. This should be our testimony. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When God gives us a divine assignment, simply let it be. Yeah. To me, according to your word. So, with all of that said, what should we do when God sends us a divine assignment? Number one, this is a big question. We must be willing. To let our perplexity move to pondering, then move us to have a desire 
for preparation, all by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Y'all got that? Yes. Yeah. Say it one more time. Say it slow. We must be willing to let our perplexity move to pondering, move us to have a desire to prepare all by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Why do I say that? We're not going to understand how God is moving. We're not going to understand the divine assignment. All right. But my faith Amen. looks up to thee. Hallelujah. Thou Lamb of Calvary. Savior. That thou we're not going to understand. We're not going to understand the calling. We're not going to understand the suffering. We're not going to understand the loneliness. But our mandate is to trust in God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So our perplexity moves to pondering. Mm -hmm. And as we ponder, we start to prepare. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Yes. We don't know what this evening is. Amen. It's going to pray. But all that we do know is that it's in his hands. Yes. Yes. Number two, allow the presence and the power of God to overtake us and move through us. Leon, that simply means you gotta let God have his way. Yes. I think Reverend Slater said, let go. And let God. Because guess what? God knows the end before we do the beginning. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. And in God, we already are victorious. All right. All right. So our mandate is to give it to Him. Our mandate is to take our hands off of it and allow God to do His thing. You ever notice? You ever notice when you put your hands on it, it get all messed up? Hallelujah. But we are to allow the power of the God of the Bible, not the God of our minds, to overtake us and work through us so the work can be done. And last but not least, we have to allow Jesus to come for us. We have to allow Jesus to be seen. We have to understand that what we do for kingdom building, Sister Watson, is not about us. It's not about accolades from the crowd. It's not about being told how well you sang that song. It's not about being told how well you exegeted that text. But all that we do, all that we say is about Jesus being seen. We have to allow Jesus to be heard. See, Deacon White was here today. He said, just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily, walking close to thee. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. On this final Sunday, before the birth of our Lord, see, I want our church to be prepared. 
let be with the Lord. Desire more of HMBC. Lord, let be. See, we understand that there will be suffering. We understand that we'll be pain. We understand that folks will always agree. But let it be, dear Lord, let it be. There will be suffering. There will be pain. But we don't weep. They can do it for a night. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. But joy comes in the morning. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Folks are going to turn their backs on you. They're going to walk away to come back no more. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Lord, let it be according to your will. Let it be according to your way. So on this third Sunday of 2022, of December, I don't want to talk about Rudolph. I don't want to talk about Frosty. I simply want God to give me Jesus. When I'm lost, give me Jesus. When I'm sick, give me Jesus. When I'm bewildered, give me Jesus. When I'm confused, give me Jesus. When I'm depressed, give me Jesus. Discouraged, give me Jesus. I'm lonely, give me Jesus. My heart is broken, give me Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend on God. No they slay me, yet will I trust in Him. I trust the process because my faith. Is it God? I get weary, but my faith is it God? I get sick, but my faith is it God? When they forsake me, but my faith is it God? I may get lonely, I may get tired, I may get confused, but my faith is it God? The song writer says, Time is filled with swift transition out of earth. Unmoved and stand. But build your hopes on things eternal. And hold your thoughts unchanging. Hey, but I'm sick. Let him in. 
Let him in. Let him in. And let him have his way. His way. Number two, allow the power of God to overtake us and move us through. Let go. And let God. And last but not least, we have to allow Jesus to come for us. We have to allow Jesus to be seen. And we have to allow Jesus to be heard. Yes. Give me Jesus. Give me something that I need. Give your family something that they need. What's the point of giving them gifts? If you don't give them Jesus. And let him have his way. We won't always understand. Just like Mary. Mary didn't understand. She didn't understand the assignment. But since the sharing she knew where the assignment came from. She knew that the assignment was a direct from God. You don't understand the assignment. But what you do know is that the assignment is from God. So you start to ponder. But that you're pondering because you know where the assignment is from. Turn it to preparation. And once you're prepared, allow the power of God to overtake you. Don't be scared. Allow him to move. Allow him to have his way. Because God can do anything but fail. But once you allow me, once you allow me, what you allow him in, allow Jesus to come forth. Don't worry about what friends say about you. Don't worry about what your boots say about you. Allow God to come forth. Allow him to be seen in your life. Let there be some evil fruit on your tree. And allow Jesus to be heard. There's somebody depending on you. There's somebody depending on you, Sister Kelly. To allow your perplexity to turn into pondering. To turn into preparation. Let God have his way. There's only one way. It's God's way. Let him have his way. And I'm going to say this not legally. I said this to my class the other night. By the mere fact that you woke up this morning, surely you got a purpose. By the mere fact that he woke you up, you got a purpose. It's your responsibility. To find out what that purpose is. 
It's your responsibility to seek his face. It's your responsibility to have a devotional life. It's your responsibility to read and study his word. It's your responsibility to desire to be in his presence. You're not going to understand the assignment. But I want you to, uh, to trust the assignment giver. Allow Jesus to come forth in your life. Jesus. Jesus. Allow Jesus to be seen Jesus. through your works. Jesus. And allow Jesus to be heard. Because there's somebody dependent on you to get this right. Tell your neighbor, give me Jesus. Tell your other neighbor, give me Jesus. The door of the church are open. God bless you.